Good morning, folks. Well, I wasn't expecting to actually do this job, but since my hand has been slightly forced, um, I have removed the wiper motor yet again, so I've had to get the scut off. Uh, it's been a bit of a pain, and most of the clips have completely gone. I need to get some of the clips, the little, uh, like those little tree clips that hold the scuttle down, because half of them are like one-time use only. Once you're removing them, bloody useless to free fit. Um, but basically, I'm trying to confirm whether the intermittent wiper are two things. Now, I've discovered, um, thanks to a viewer, I actually discovered that the, the reason why the wash wipe, the wipe side of the wash wipe doesn't work and the intermittent wiper is because they're both the same wire. They come out the, they actually go through, both those um, two functions go through the Petron relay, which we've tested and it clicks there's no reason why that doesn't work because if it if it was just open circuit, which is what they usually do, the ohms would be way more than the uh, what was in spec two twenty ohms. So the other side is this. Now the trouble is I can't really test it on the car um, because I actually try to hook up my multimeter um, while in situ to the plug on the car, so I took the plug off. And I could measure continuity through first and second, the, the normal first and second wires. So first first on your the, the slow setting, then the second, the fast setting. The wire for the intermittent wiper, which is like a blue-green wire, I couldn't get any continuity. But I suspect that was because the, that plug had been disconnected. And I switched the actual... Um, the, the put the intermittent setting on the stalk and I couldn't get any continuity but I couldn't hear the relay clicking and I suspect the relay isn't clicking because the circuit's broken so I can't really do that test on the car and I couldn't actually back probe it because these wires are difficult they've got this like insulation inside there I can't back probe behind the connectors to see what's going on whether it's actually going from there to there um well there doesn't seem to be anything wrong but we're going to take this apart because apparently this is a real common fault. These are these motors were fitted to pretty much every um, rover from the R8s, basically the 200s, 400s, 25s, 45s, the HHRs, the R3s, uh, Rover 100. I suspect that these were fitted to almost every uh, car. These motors. The linkages are a bit different on each car, but this is the same. It's a Trico unit, and I've had bad experiences with Trico before, quite frankly. Uh, their washer motors are absolutely rubbish. Um, but basically, you've got the connections where they go in, and sometimes the contacts can wear. Now, it's a good idea to actually do some preventive maintenance. I'm going to take the cover off this motor. We're going to disconnect it all. Take the cover off this motor, probably give the commutator a bit of a clean to see if we can actually just refurb it. We've got it off the car. I might as well do this properly now instead of just giving it a clean like I did last time. Uh, I was in a bit of a rush the last time, and the idea... Well, the reason I got it out of the scuttle off was because I thought that the drains was causing a leak, which they weren't. They were slightly blocked, but they weren't that blocked. Um, but what you've got to do, first of all, is take these three bolts up the back on the mounting plate. So these three 10 bolts, take them off. And then to get this connector off this metal piece, you just need to press this tab in. In fact, I can do this now. Can I? Oh, God, come on. Use my knee. It's really hard to do this on cover. There you go, it's gone off. Right, that tab's out. So we'll take the take the bolts out and we'll go from there. And obviously don't forget to disconnect the 13mm bolt holding it actually on so I can move that so I can get these out of the way. Sure. Just be able to break off. Should need a vice for this. There you go, it's gone. Now this is it might be a bit stiff. No, it isn't. It actually comes off quite easy there's a spring washer actually here there's actually a spring so you've got the nut the spring make sure you've got this in order there we go and we lift that arm well away okay right this one is just going to take these bolts out Yeah, this is a fairly common item to pack up, but usually people say they don't part properly. I've got a feeling that there's something amiss with the wiring, and knowing my look, that'll be the case. 
trafficking, which coincidentally is the same relay, um, which is why a lot of people would say, oh, it's the relay. Well, I've tested it and it's fine. The super locking doesn't have to be configured to actually one touch open. Sometimes you have to press the, the button twice for the actual doors to deadlock, the super lock. Um, but some people did not want it at all. And it's possible my car was never configured with um, super locking. The only way you'll know is um, go uh, go to one of these places that have these machines that you can plug that can plug in and read the Petron unit. There's a few places. Um, anyway, right, we're going to move that out the way because we don't need that linkage now. Just forget that it's there. Right now we've got the motor. Okay. Now. The one thing I'll probably have to look at first is this unit. Now we have some rivets, okay? Now these rivets, they need to be drilled out. Now the idea is that we use, you've got the rivets, but you've got these holes next to them and you use self-tapping screws to actually hold the casing back on. But we're gonna um, whack it back off and see what we've got. Now we use a drill with a I think it's a two and a half, three millimeter bit, and we're going to drill the rivets out. Make sure we got it the right way, Andrew. Go. Right, just keep hanging away at the cover, and it should just come off. It really, it is going to be greasy and messy, so just keep prying this off as best as you can until you can break it off. There you go, it's gone. Just gone that. There we go. Right, well, la la, and we have the gearbox. So we have like a worm and drive gear that drive that motor drives the the worm gear and that spins the cog and then that spins the spindle. Very simple. And then we got the contacts on this side. This is what we want to look at. Um, I may just remove the rest of these pot rivets, but we'll see. Right, well, the first bit that we can take off. Is this worm gear so just lift it up and it should come out and there's your shaft and that's where the nut goes on so we're just going to move that to the side this is all going to be cleaned up anyway i should have the uh the parts bin but um yeah i'm just going to give that a, i'm going to take some of that grease out give it a bit of a re-grease it'll probably need that i am going to take the um the commutator the brushes out the motor out and just give it a clean because i know that that really helps uh with the lifespan of these things because uh, obviously you've got the wires going through there, but as I say, we'll take these two screws out. I know there's a big massive magnet on here, so it's going to take a pull. Uh, on this side, you have the contacts. Now, you need to take that 8mm out, which is what I'll do now. Yeah, sorry, it, misinformation here. Basically, there's a little circlip in there, and what I would do is just leave it out with a pick. So just do it very, very carefully, and then this whole housing can come up. And it has literally come straight out, so... It looked like an 8mm nut with all, with all that grease. It was quite deceptive, so just don't lose that um, circlip. So that's there, and this should just come straight off, and it has. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, that's the sort of, that's the reason why you need to look at it. Now, these contacts don't look too bad. We're going to give it a bit of a clean up. Just clean all this grease off. Um... Now, to be fair, I'm afraid I've got a suspicion that we've got a bit of a wiring fault because I don't think there's anything wrong with this thing. I really don't. It is, is really greasy. You can see all of this. So um, be prepared for a complete mess. You can see that there's actually nothing wrong with the contacts. They are all an equal length. Sometimes they wear at the ends, which prevents contact. But as far as I'm concerned, they don't look bad at all. They just need a bit of a clean up and a bit of a, you know, a bit of a re grease in places. But unfortunately, I suspect this motor is actually okay. Um, but we're going to give it a bit of a service, might as well, um, just to prevent future problems. But that is a bit of a headache, to be honest. On the other side, you've got these torque screws. I would take these two out. I think they look like T20 torque screws. And also, you've got this bolt right at the end of the shaft. So you've got the shaft that goes through. And this, this screw basically adjusts the end float. I'll take that out as well. That will come out quite nicely. And 
then. And this is going to this is going to be a bit of a struggle because the manet is going to pull. There we go. Go go. There we go. Right, we've got the magnet. We'll give that a clean up on the parts washer. And we have the commutator, which actually doesn't look too bad. Again, it just needs a bit of a clean. It doesn't seem too bad at all. Um, the brushes look good, actually. I'm going to uh, just give you a different camera angle. If you look actually at the brushes, they've got plenty of life left in them. Yeah. I think you've got this one as well over here. So if I just show you. Yeah. You've got plenty of life in them bushes. So we're just going to give it a general clean up. So what I'm going to try and do is take that end screw out. And it should theoretically come out. And then the, the brushes will sort of click in. Ah, I can get it out with my hand actually. Just take the screw out in my hand. There we go, and that's just that. So I'll just pop that over there. I should theoretically. I've got a feeling there's another circuit, that's why it actually won't come out. Oh well, better not. I won't remove it then. I'll just put that screw back in. I thought it would actually come out all in one go, but Turns out it doesn't, but I'll just give it a clean up as it is because there's nothing much that actually I'm concerned about on this. Now I know you're not meant to use brake cleaner on electrics, but the truth is it, it won't do it too much harm and this is rubbish brake cleaner. I want to get rid of this, but it's good enough to just give it a really general um, clean up on the inside here because it really needs it. And I use contact cleaner on the actual motor itself, but it's coming up really nicely and everything's looking much drier before we apply new grease. I know it makes sense to, well, sounds a bit mad to clean things up before applying grease, but it's stuff like this disc, you know, just make sure that it actually works. I think this as well, this is, it will be full of um, brush material and all sorts of, <coughs> I'm getting high up the fumes. Access out, and we just yeah, just get rid of all the rest of it, and then go in with a clean one, a bit more car brake cleaner. I will finish off with well, brake cleaner is basically a more alcoholic version of electric contact cleaner. So you've got contact cleaner, which is just a very light rubbing alcohol. Brake cleaner is a bit more alcoholish. There's much more higher content, so it dissipates quickly. That's what you want for brakes and general cleaning as well. Carb cleaner tends to be on the extreme side of things. Um, and I wouldn't use that on anything other than engine parts for what it is designed for because it will wreck plastics. You couldn't use it for this. I wouldn't trust it. And that is nice and clean. You can actually see down it now. It always helps. Okay, right, what we have here, um, this one, the brown one, is the intermittent. Okay, that's the intermittent. Now I've tested continuity between that and the brown pin just up here, it's the top left one, and we're getting continuity. So I know that the connection between that and that is good. I've tested these two as well, and we're getting full continuity from these to these so that's all important and now i'm just gonna go over and clean all this uh, up and uh, we'll uh, put it back together mm. nice and clean that is nice and clean. Concentrate, 
down there where the brushes contact the commutator okay there is a bit of scoring which indicates that the motor is sort of got a, a little movement in the bearing that's usually what it indicates but anyway we're going to put the cover back on because that is squeaky clean now the magnet i should say which is what it is uh, put the screws in and then we will start re-greasing this come on twist you've got to twist it there we go it's gone on you've got to twist it so that it actually gets into the shaft because that magnet is really strong uh, and now I can just flip the bolts back in and um, that's job one done it's always good to clean the motors out do it properly okay what I'll do first is just put some grease inside the gearbox just multi-purpose grease and just smear it in got plenty of it there we go and it doesn't really matter if it gets greased up because it's going to be greased up one turn put a bit of grease on the, the top surface done now contacts I am going to put some grease just on the main bits, okay? I'm not going to put it on the tips. Now, it could be that's why they haven't worn because they've got grease on them, but I don't really fancy grease being completely there uh, in this situation. So I'm just going to put a dab on and then I'm going to put some grease underneath, okay? We can pop this... Uh, contact plate which um i might actually yeah that's actually been cleaned up really nicely and we are just going to pop it down now what i will do is just to smear grease around the shaft again lovely okay but they should make very nice contact so the i think the intermittent is the outer one and the inners are the newer ones but that's fine they uh they shouldn't wear out uh, based on what I've just done, just put a bit over the ends and now this is where you've got to get the sir clip over so just push the sir clip in and you should get a small screwdriver and it should what you might have to do is get two screwdrivers so I might have to get another one oh yeah and just push it down there you go and you can see that it's just even around that shaft it's really pushed all the way down and that's nice i've just put some grease on the other side and we're literally just going to go and um pop it on over just uh, pop it on over the remains of the rivets and then we'll go and do some well i'm going to find some self-tapping screws now, it turns out i didn't actually need to use these holes you could you can do so but i actually used the original hole where the actual um rivet was and i know the self-tapping screw is too long but it's an example you just need to really go hard if you've got one of these or a decent screwdriver you can get it through that plastic into the metal because you've already cut the metal you don't really you don't need to tap it these are self-tapping screws they do what they say on the tin so just go around do that one that one that one that one just be aware of how much the screws are actually sticking through but in this case it really doesn't matter it works and about five minutes later we have a load of self tappings they're quite equal i might have to redo that one um i had to put a, a normal one in there because obviously this bracket and uh, one there and they literally go through just a little bit honestly and the the cover is now tight and that's what you want done now that is one refurbished wiper motor now if you had wear on those two contacts or three contacts usually it's those two contacts the power contacts i've seen people solder a thick piece of wire to actually contact the brass plate on the inside the, the turntable that i cleaned up now the only thing with doing that that i would be very wary of is if you fit a too thick a piece of um electrical wire you may find that it blows a fuse and with the intermittent going back to the petron, we're given an excuse for the relay to blow up entirely. Um, so we're going to fit this back, just test it. But I don't think this is the answer. There's nothing in here that suggests that there is ever a problem. But it's been cleaned up now. So at least I have not had one problem. So we're going to hook it back to the wiper motor 
um, and then put it back on the car. So if you join me back at the car. Right, the wiper motor is now back in, battery connected, the keys are in the ignition, and does it work when I turn it on intermittent, so... Not a sausage. If I turn it to one, yeah, two, fine. Flick uh, the stalk, yeah. Intermittent, absolutely nothing. Right, I am going to speak to somebody who knows more about this than me because that relay, it tested fine. Ohm's resistance, absolutely fine. So it's not short circuited. I can hear it clicking. And yet the motor, that is perfectly fine. Unfortunately, I didn't see any problems with it. If there was, it would have been the problem. The only other thing is that there's a break in the wire between the relay and the actual wiper motor. And that means that it could be anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. I'm going to leave you there with that thought. I am going to ask for advice on this because it's possible the relay may need to be changed, but I need to speak to somebody who knows more about this than me. Oh, go away. I'm sorry about the light. It works! What the hell is going on? It actually works. It's clicking and working. What the hell? I do not get what's happened. What have I done to make it work? It wasn't working earlier when I just had the spindles and you were watching. I put the wipers on. It's working. It's clicking twice. If you, if you listen to it. Yeah, two clicks. Two clicks. On and off. What the hell? And even better still, turn that off, wash wipe. Oh, it works on that as well. What the hell? We've had a victory here, but I don't know why. I've d I must have done something right. I mean, I've just cleaned the wiper out and this is probably just a lesson. If anybody's watching this video and who's having the same issues as me, um... Yeah, I would suggest you clean that, you clean the connections here, check the relays work, but clean the wiper motor. Do not dismiss the wiper motor. Everybody says, oh, it's the intermittent wiping, it's the relay and the petron system. No, no, no. Don't dismiss other things just because that is so unreliable. Touch wood, I can't, well, I can touch fake wood. This looks to be a better, well, a well-made unit. It's 18 years old and not one relay is out of spec so i will leave you there i've got um, an interior to put back together again but um i found why the um center console is not sitting flush on this side this has been bent back so i'm gonna have to bend it i'm gonna have to bend it somehow to actually get it positioned because i'm looking at that that's nice and straight but that's all bent i don't think the camera can show you that but well, little victories, that's a big victory. But what about the super locking? Um, if I... I oh, know the doors, um, the back doors. Just for safety, just in case that this doesn't work. So I'm going to take the keys out. I can't even see where to lock. Right, lock. Now, can I? Yeah, I can. Hmm. So the super locking still doesn't work. That's interesting. Right, I'm going to leave you there, guys. The super locking still doesn't work. I've got a feeling that it's not being configured for this car. But again, we'll have a look. To, while we've got this open, I'll have a look at a few other wires and just make sure we've got some continuity. But the central locking fully works, so... Maybe it isn't configured, but 
if I may, maybe have a mess around, maybe we might get some results. But not too much messing around. We know where that can lead. See you soon, guys. Take care.